church. Room this morning, I'd like to invite you to stand up with us. And welcome to everybody watching online. Uh, why don't you join me in prayer before we start the service? So, Father God, we just invite you in this house. We invite you in our homes, in our living rooms, in our bedrooms, wherever we are. And God, we just ask that we would encounter you this morning. Holy Spirit, would you just come and would you teach us, would you remind us of, of Jesus, of who you are, of what you've said to us. Uh, we love you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, good morning, church. Are you ready to worship the Lord this morning? Yes, do you feel the holy presence in this building this morning? Because I feel it. I know that Jesus is here this morning. And I hope that these songs just resonate in your heart. So feel free to dance, to sing, and just clap your hands before the Lord. Amen? Okay, let's start. Let's clap our hands, church.
this morning, Holy Spirit. Your presence so sweet, God, sweet like honey, sweet like honey, God. You know, I just sense in the room that God is giving us new dreams for this next season, fresh dreams, fresh purposes, maybe something that God has spoken to you before, but you've forgotten or life has gone in the way and, and you know, you've, you've lost hope. But I feel like in this room and wherever you're at, that God is giving us fresh dreams again. You know, hope is coming. You know, the end is coming for the pandemic. Things are coming back. And, you know, God is giving us fresh dreams again. And so just let him speak to you this morning. Jesus, speak to us, God, this morning. Holy Spirit, we want to hear your voice, God. Let's just wait a moment and have him speak to us. Jesus. Jesus, you make us brave so that we can go God, because the dreams that you give us are so big and so impossible that we can't do it on our own, God. But we trust in you. Jesus, speak to us. We're listening, God. Yes, Jesus. So thank you, God, for this morning. We pray, God, that you would speak through Pastor Bong as he preaches. And God, just continue to be with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may all take a seat. All right, good morning, church. Uh, My name is Norman. Uh, Thank you for being here. Thank you for everyone tuning in. Um, It's great to be back. Uh, We are able to have 250 people in this house so if you are willing if you're able uh, we invite you to come sign up um, on our facebook page and on our uh, website there's a link where you can go to eventbrite and sign up yeah so we have a few announcements this morning first one yeah so Um, Our first announcement is uh, we are having a prayer and fasting um, in October, coming soon, and our theme is for sons and daughters. So wait for that announcement coming up. It's coming real soon, um, and we can't wait. Um, Also, Uprising, if you have anybody in your uh, family that is ages uh, grade 8 to grade 12, and maybe a little bit older, we invite you to come. It's a gathering here in the IWC building um, for us to fellowship. Um, and uh, connect with each other. And I, and I just want to, um, you know, challenge the parents to bring the kids, um, you know, if, even if they don't want to, maybe at least once, twice, you know, um, you know they can give it a try. Um, and so, yeah, for our giving this morning, um, uh, there are a few ways to give. Um, you can give through uh, in inter- Interact eTransfer, through our app, through our website. And why don't I just pray for that this morning? Let's bow our heads. God, I thank you for today. We thank you, God, that you are provider, that you have seen us through some dark seasons, and yet we are still here and we are still able. God, and we pray that you would teach us um, the amount and that we would give faithfully and cheerfully. We love you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
Hello. Hello, good morning to everybody. Would you say to the person beside you, I'm so blessed to see you and to be seated with you this morning. All right. For those of you who are here at 1077 St. James, we are just really so happy to see you that you have uh, found your way and you registered and um, made it uh, to be here and not just settle for just watching on, online, but uh, we thank you that you just went out of your way. And also at the same time, we'd like to thank you, all of those who are watching with us right now, live, uh, online. Uh, we appreciate you. We thank you for your time uh, to really be with us. You are uh, deeply appreciated by us, and we are praying that today, uh, both the people here in the sanctuary and those of you who are watching online will continue to experience, will, will be moved and be touched by the Lord. Before I continue, uh, just uh, we'd like to show you this video about the forthcoming uh, prayer and fasting that we're going to have as a, as a whole uh, IWC, all IWC sites will be having this, this coming September, uh, for the last week of September. So let's watch this video. In the Bible, in the book of Judges, chapter 2, we can read that Joshua had brought the nation of Israel into the Promised Land. After his death, others of his generation lived on for a while, but then they too died out. And while they lived, the people of Israel served God faithfully. However, after the death of Joshua and those who had seen God's mighty acts, there arose another generation after them who did not know the Lord, or the work which he had done for Israel. The result, this people turned their backs on God. Judgment came upon them. Let's not allow this to happen to our kids and grandkids. Our increasingly secular culture is shaping the minds of the young generations. It is a known fact that a significant percentage of the younger generations are living the church. Research shows that there's hardly any difference between a young person in church and a young person outside the church. The young generation is bombarded with every temptation known to men. It's, become, it's becoming a challenge for parents in the church to lead them to an intimate relationship with God. But there's hope. Parents, we need to take seriously our solemn responsibility to teach our kids about God. Let's pray for them to have a personal encounter with God that will cause them to surrender their lives to God and fulfill His purpose. Let us believe that the next generation will have an amazing impact on our world and that they will pursue God with such passion and zeal. God is able to do above and beyond what we ask of Him. I invite you to join us as we pray and fast for our sons and daughters and grandkids in the next generations on September 27 to October 3. I am inviting the youth and young adults as well to join us. If you have prayer requests, please send them to us, and we would like to hear from you. God bless you all. Oh yeah, we thank you, Pastor Juni, for that announcement. Um, so it's uh, an encouragement for all of us to please uh, prepare ourselves. We're calling all members of IWC from all the five sites, all the way to Nipawa and Brandon, Transcona and Northgate, and, and, and the people here at St. James to participate in this forthcoming uh, prayer and fasting for, our, for the next generation because we know that God wants to do something powerful uh, on, on our young people and the next generation. That is why we are going to invest for a season, for a time, a week of prayer and believing that God will you know, that our young generation will encounter the Lord and will really get um, connected with God. Hallelujah. So uh, this morning, as I prepare to uh, share the message, I would like us to bow our heads and uh, close our eyes as we pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you, God, for, for this morning, for bringing us together. We thank you, Lord, for the power of your word. Lord, the, your, your word that will be released this morning in our hearts, in our hearing, Lord. And we declare that it will bear fruit in due season. We thank you, God, that your word is powerful and it will penetrate and will go through us, in us, O oh God. 
And uh, Lord, it will really touch us and move us and compel us, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, that your, your word will change our lives. God, we thank you for teachable hearts, responsive hearts, Lord, spirits that are open to your word. Have your way in this place. We give you glory in Jesus' name, and everybody say, Amen. I would like to speak about on the topic about the blessing of intimacy. So, particularly relating intimacy with God with the intimacy in, in marriage. But before I continue, I would like to ask you. So, we, we are all familiar with the, with the term, uh, no one is an island. So, how many of you believe that, uh, you know, we need relationships, we need other people, we need to interact with other people. It will be so difficult. Even the past uh, 17 months were in, uh, as we went through the pandemic, online learning, online work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So pe people really had a hard time uh, going through just watching a person on screen and really uh, scrolling down, up and down, and then try to to uh, go through the lessons. But with interaction, which is very important, the reason why, uh, that is how God created all of us. God wants us to, to uh, interact, to relate with people. There was a time uh, back in the Philippines when we, our, uh, Christ, the Christian school that the church was running used to have a, um, a divider for every student. And uh, we have found out that a number of years later that the learning styles of the Filipino kids, of Filipino kids, is not about them being uh, without, they cannot really learn better with uh, a divider because Filipino kids interact. They, they talk to their classmates and it's how, uh, how uh, learning improved. So we removed the dividers and we saw how uh, effective it is and how the kids or the students learn faster and uh, and they participate more in class. So no one is an island, we live for relationships. We cannot survive this earth without relationships. Look at the person beside you. Do you have a relationship with that person? Right? Okay. So, but uh, in the same token, marriage, uh, in this context, marriage is designed by God as the most intimate of all human to human interactions or relationships. Marriage is more intimate than a parent with a child or a child with a parent or if you happen to be uh, someone you call your closest friend. When it comes to marriage, it really is deeper than those other relationships. So marriage, again, in Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 to 25, I would just like to go through these verses. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord had got taken from the man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now the bone of my bones, and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. So we just read a passage of Scripture that emphasizes the, you know, how marriage is before the Lord, how God instituted marriage as the very first institution that he established from the very beginning of time, all the way back in Genesis, it is intended by God to be the, hus the, the, the couple will really leave the, the parents or the family where they came from and to be with the person that, that they chose to live with for the rest of their lives. So marriage is intended to be permanent, final. That's why there is a, a vow, a commitment to say, till death do us part, not, not till death but till death do them part, do us part. So the, the two shall, become, shall no longer become one. They shall be, the, the two shall, not, uh, shall become no longer two, but one flesh. 
So what God has joined together, let no man separate. So that's how important it is. So God established a marriage covenant, right? God said that this is a formal agreement or a promise between the, the couple. They're saying that they're going to be loving, the, loving each other for the rest of their lives. So it's more than a, a certificate, a contract that the couple signs but it is really them pledging their lives together to live for each other, to uh, sacrifice for each other. Now, in any marriage, in any relationship, God should be in the center of it. The, an opportunity for me to counsel uh, those who will be, uh, you know, who, who planned to get married, and I said to them, oh, you're allowed to have a third party in the relationship. Pastor Boom! No, a third party. Oh my goodness, that's, that's bad. And then I said, no, well, you and your spouse and God in the center. Because without God as the foundation of the relationship, even if when you're a boyfriend and girlfriend, that relationship cannot really grow and, and really become strong not unless it is founded in Jesus Christ. Not unless you recognize the lordship of Jesus Christ in your relationship. How much more in marriage? I thank the Lord. My wife is here. You know, it's been 24 years and looking forward for our 25th anniversary. And it's all by the faithfulness of God. We went through a lot, you know, but uh, God, God has been so faithful. How many married people, married couples in the house? Would you lift up your hands, please? All right. And how many of you are thankful to the Lord for the spouse that God has given you? Right? Through, through all the joys, the successes, the, the ups and downs, all the things, you know, the, the trials, the victories. And you, you are together in this. And that is why I know you can also say, if you are, for example, a, a, a person or a, a couple of faith, I mean to say you are born again believers, you know that you know that you cannot reach this point without Jesus Christ you know, being in the center of your relationship. Amen? So what about, you know, what a way for us to really recognize that, that if we are, uh, we have this relationship, a marriage relationship, we have this intimacy that, that continues on from, from year to year, and then God being in the center of it, um, it is so important for us to realize that, that marriage cannot be established not unless we recognize God in this marriage. So, in our passage this morning, I would just like to read from, uh, from Matthew or from Mark. But before that, so in the same way, if there is intimacy in the relationship of a husband and wife, if there is intimacy in marriage, in the same way that as people of God, as children of God, we can have this what we call spiritual intimacy with God. If, for example, if I ask you, I throw you a question, you know, how was, because particularly for me, when I went through this uh, message, I, I got to ask myself, how is my intimacy with the Lord? You know, been walking with God for so many years. Is, is my intimacy with God growing deeper and deeper as the days go by, as the years go by? I remember a Sunday school song that says, um, I keep falling in love with Jesus over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over. Is that a song in your heart? In a sense that you are over and over, you're falling in love with Jesus as the years, as the days, the months, as the years go by. Or, you know, ah, it's, it's going cold. But it's good for us this morning to take a look about this aspect of intimacy with Christ, intimacy with God. Because if there is intimacy involved between two married individuals in the same way in our spiritual lives, God wants us, God is inviting us to be intimate with Him, intimate with God, and because for the purpose of what? For us to, for us to have a revelation, a deeper understanding of who God is. Uh, this morning at the pre-service prayer, I spoke about uh, Psalm on, on Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. And bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. And what are those benefits? The forgiveness, the grace, the mercy of God. 
as the years go by, how, do, how much do we understand the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God, the greatness, the faithfulness of God? So there's so much more to be, to be known about God. God is inexhaustible. We cannot fathom. We cannot, you know, there is no end in, uh, in understanding God. But God wants to reveal himself to us. The Bible says, if you seek me, you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. God is willing, God is more than willing to, to reveal himself to us when we have this appetite, this hunger to know him. So let's read our text this morning because it really, uh, I would like us to go through it and uh, understand that if God is willing to bring us to this, you know, into a walk of intimacy with him, he wants, us to, he wants to bring us to this level of intimacy with him on a daily basis. Mark chapter 4, 10 to 12, and then 33 to 34. But when he was alone, those around him with the 12 asked, asked him about the parable. So that verse 10 was speaking about verses 1 to 9 of the chapter of Mark chapter, Mark chapter 4, when Jesus spoke about the parable of the sower. So when, when they were already alone, when Jesus, the, the, the multitudes left, the people left, Jesus was alone, and those around, let's go back, uh, he was left with those around him, particularly with the 12, they asked him about the meaning of the parable. And he said to them, Jesus said to them, to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom, the revelation of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside all things, to those who are outside, all things come in parables. Like they, they will have a hard time understanding things about God. Let's go to verse 12. So that seeing they may see and not perceive. They may have eyes, but they cannot see. Hearing they may hear and not understand. So they have hearing. They can hear it, but they could hardly understand what, what they hear. Lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. 33 and 34. And with many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. But without a parable, he did not speak to them. And when they were alone, he explained all things to his disciples. Like when, when the crowds are gone, they already left, Jesus would then explain to them the meaning so they would have an understanding of what, of what Jesus is saying. Now, let me ask again, how many of you have been around a very famous person, a celebrity? Anyone? Like, you know, somebody famous? No, nobody? Right. Lights, house lights, please? I couldn't see. Anyone here that you took a selfie, you had a selfie with this very famous person? Like that? How many? I would like to show you a... And some samples. Yeah, I, I happened to uh, took that selfie uh, with a very famous person. All right, next one. I had this opportunity to uh, to be to have this selfie with uh, with a celebrity called Jolly B. Right now, how was the feeling of being uh, or having a selfie with someone very famous? You feel good, right? Next one. That one. That was me at Jolly Bee. Because once, one noontime, I was with my wife, we were driving. I said, oh, I, I want to get uh, a sandwich. So let's go to the other one, the M, the starts with an M. But in passing, passing by uh, Ellis, we, I saw around, uh, you know, because they are close to, not, not too far apart, I saw a lot of men in black, like six footer men with uh, uh, radios and stuff like that. And then so I got intrigued, and my wife and I said, let's, let's go and check it out. So we went to uh, Jollibee, and we found out, hey, what's the commotion around, you know? Because the, uh, yeah, the eagle has landed, the eagle has landed, okay? Station, station, okay, battle station, something like that, you know, as we're hearing. And then, and then I asked one of the crew, and I said, oh, uh, who, 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 what's, what's all this? And he said, uh, the prime minister is coming. Po. Oh, okay. You know what we, my wife and I did? We stayed by the door. I had my phone on standby. So at the moment, the, the person, would you show the picture? Yeah. 
And how many of you would believe that that is? Uh, yeah. The two black, the people in black were the bodyguards, the PSGs, the, you know, the, uh, what do you call them? The uh, secret service, all right, by that guy. And so uh, when, I, when I saw him, I, I, was, I, I pressed the video and I, and I looked at him because he's six foot uh, two. And I, Hi. I got starstruck a bit and uh, I tried to get, um, you know, I tried to get a good position so that I could really get a selfie with him. And that's the farthest I could get. All right. So now during that time, Jesus was the most famous person celebrity, teacher. In the, with the millennials, they call him, they call him the, right now the influencer of his day. Right? People, crowds, massive crowds would follow this man named Jesus. When he would go to one place, people walk for miles and miles just to listen and hear what he has to say. And uh, because of this, uh, because of Jesus, so all Israel during that time were really out to, you know, Wow, we need to go. We need to listen. We need to hear what he's going to say. I mean, because, he's, because he speaks with, with authority. He speaks something that's different from what we hear from, from the Pharisees and the Sadducees. There must, there's, there's something in this man. Now, how would you feel if you happen to be the one hanging around this celebrity? You're one of the 12. You're one of those like, you know, uh, uh, excuse me, excuse me. Hey, the teacher is, uh, hey, pave the way. Come on, come on. Uh, look, look, silence, please. Shh. He's about to speak, okay? All right, come on, Jesus. Okay, we're close, so I'm staying here. You know, how would you feel if you happen to be with this very famous person and you will feel so privileged and you're like, wow, you know? And then he would say, oh, would you get, a, I'm, I'm kind of thirsty, so would you, would you get me a glass of water? Oh, sure. Here, Jesus. Right? I remember um, I was, my very first ministry at the church was to give Pastor Ray, our, our senior pastor, uh, a glass of water. Because he would preach his lungs out, and then he would be, I, I, you know, in the middle of the, the preaching, I would run towards, because we were located in a, in a mall, a small, like a mall. There was a fast food, a food court, and uh, I would get the glass of water, and then and I'd run from and go back inside the sanctuary, and then and I say, Papa, Papa Ray, here's your water. Little did I know that uh, the scripture says, he who gives a cup of water to a prophet receives a prophet's reward. I wasn't after the reward. All I wanted is to, to serve the Lord. Now, so in this passage, Jesus was speaking to the crowd, but then when the crowds are gone, he would reveal himself. He will make his disciples and those around him understand his teachings because the crowd couldn't like what does he mean what did, what did he mean by saying those things now isn't that a privilege to be intimate with someone like Jesus himself and that is why today at this very moment the importance of us having an intimacy with God and the, the understanding of the, the privilege of knowing God and God revealing himself to us through his word. That, you, you, you know, when God, God can show himself, God can teach us, God can make us understand his goodness, his love, his, his mercy, his faithfulness. And it, oh, it comes when we seek him. Now, I would like to share two blessings of being intimate with God. Number one, the, one of the best blessings of being intimate with Jesus is that he reveals his secrets to his people. You know, he reveals his secret to his disciples. Isn't that a blessing? Now, later on, I'll define what a disciple means because um, to understand what is a disciple, he would reveal his secrets to his disciples. Disciples are what you call followers of Christ, followers of Jesus. So when he was alone, those around him with the 12 in verse 10 asked him about the parable and he said to them, you know, when he was alone with them. So the Lord will, Jesus will just there, you know, hey guys, this is what it meant. This is what the parable meant. Oh, oh, is that, is that it? 
You know, it, that's what it is. Wow, thank you, Jesus. Now, Jesus is not limiting himself to his disciples 2,000 years ago. But to us, his followers today, he wants us to know him and to be his followers. A whole, he wants us to be wholehearted followers of Jesus Christ. He wants us to, he doesn't want um, a relationship that is just an acquaintance kind of a relationship. No, he wants to go deeper. How many of you, you have best friends? How many of you that you can open and bear yourself with, to, to someone and share your, your, your deepest and darkest secrets? And they, then they will not judge you and they, will, and they will understand you and they will pray for you and they will not re reject you. So in the, same, in the same way, Jesus is calling us to be his wholehearted, devoted followers. This is what discipleship is all about. It's not a casual relationship. To, follow, to be a follower of Jesus in an intimate way is not a casual relationship. No, it's, it's God. Can you imagine Jesus is with you 24-7? You sleep, you know, where Jesus would sleep. He, you, he, he would, you would go where Jesus would go. What a blessing, what a privilege during that time for the disciples. They are with him. And that's why they, would, they were able to see all the miracles all the signs and wonders right before their very eyes. The, the, the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hears, you know, the miracles of, of, of people who are dead coming back to life right before their eyes. Now, it didn't stop. You know, miracles, signs and wonders didn't stop with the disciples. It can continue now to us. As we get to know Christ, God can, Jesus can work through us and in us. When we have this relationship with Christ, ourselves. Now you would say, oh, I, I, Pastor Bong, I, I already went to church, so I guess that's enough. Oh, Pastor Bong, I, I spent uh, an hour and a half already. Oh, I, I did my time of worship. Oh, uh, I read, I re you know, I, I listened to the sermon. Is, is that enough for me to be intimate with Christ? I would just like to say that's good. That's a good start. But there must be more. And that is why, you know, it's, it's something for us to realize that Knowing God is not a one-time thing. It, has, it is continuous. It's got to be a continuous. It's a relationship. And, there's, and there are ways for us to know Christ. How many of you, uh, you get to read your Bible? So don't, don't raise your hands. But you have this appetite to read the Bible on a daily basis. You know, you have this appetite to commune with the Lord on a regular basis. You know, driving... Uh, um, a, a part of my, my, what I do is that I talk to the Lord while, I, while driving. I would play a worship music, uh, you know, going to work or something, or before going to, g getting off my car, before go coming in, you know, I would commune with the Lord and talk to the Lord. I mean, I'm not saying that's the only time, but there's so many, op so much opportunity for us. So it's not going to be a, it's not a casual relationship, but it's a, it, the, what Christ wants and what he wants for us is to have an intimate relationship with him. There's a scripture in Genesis 18, 17 to 18. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Shall I keep this for my friend Abraham? Can you imagine Abraham is being called the friend of God? I love that song. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. What an... What a privilege to be called a friend of God. That God can reveal himself to us and he reveal his, his majesty, his greatness. I mean, how, how amazing the goodness of God and the love of God. This morning at the pre-service prayer, I spoke about Psalm 103, about the scripture that says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget, do not forget his benefits. Do not forget his goodness. I remember the song way, way back. Think about his love. Think about his goodness. How can I forget his love? How can I forget his mercy? He satisfies. He satisfies my desires. So, shall I hide anything? We have this privilege to be intimate with Jesus. We have this. The Bible says he, God is willing to reveal himself to us. 
If you seek me, you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. If you sincerely hungry, if you are really a seeker of my heart, then there will be a revelation. You say, it's hard to understand God. It's, it's hard to understand the Bible. It's so hard to pray. Don't give up. Because with, with that honorable desire of yours, the Lord sees that heart. And the Lord will say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show myself to you. The scripture that says he will show himself strong in our behalf. He will do that to those who will seek him. And if there is an intimacy with a, with a husband and wife, that, the, that Genesis 2.24 that says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, and, and, and they are not ashamed of each other. The same thing you know, with, with Christ. Similarly to what is required of a man and woman entering into marriage to leave their parents, to leave their single life uh, and, and be with the person, God requires us to have a commitment with Jesus. And God wants us to have this loving relationship with Him. Number two, another benefit of, uh, of a blessing of being intimate with Christ is He calls us to devote ourselves to the study of His Word to hear His voice. All right? Can we show that? Point number two. So what a blessing Another blessing of being intimate with God is that there is this call from the Lord. He calls us to devote ourselves to the study of His Word so that we can hear His voice. How does God speak? He speaks through the Bible. There's so many ways, but particularly He speaks through the Word of God. The best way to know God and to understand the Lord is when we read the Bible. We know His will. We know His plans. You know, we, we get to understand His ways when we read the Bible. Sometimes it's just so hard. You know, we have, we have so many questions about life. We couldn't understand why things are happening. You know, why, why, things is, why th this is happening, why that is happening. You know, I don't know how, what or how many questions you have. And, and you would say, you know, Why? Why, why, why this and why that? And I, I could say, and I could testify, the answer to our questions can be found in the Word of God. And you would say, how? Just continue to read. Just continue to hunger. All right? Now, the Bible says He would reveal Himself. The verse says He would reveal Himself to His disciples. Now, the word disciple is the Greek word mathetes, which means a disciple is a learner, a pupil, a follower of someone, a follower of a teacher, or a, a, a follower of someone's teaching. That is a disciple. So in the case of the 12, they are disciples of the Lord Jesus. So a disciple is someone devoted to know and to apply his or her master's teachings. That's why when the disciples ask the questions about his teachings, Jesus will just explain and make, the, the, make known the meaning of what he was telling the people because the people are like, yeah, they, they see, yeah, they hear, they, they see the illustration, but they don't get it. They hear the, the message, but they don't get it because they don't have the understanding, they don't have the revelation because... For the obvious reason that they're really not there to really seek God. But for those who will seek God and seek His face, and there is this revelation, the Lord will not withhold Himself from anyone who will seek Him, who wants to know Him. Now, speaking about discipleship, uh, in September, so in the weeks of September, we will be launching the discipleship department of IWC. Uh, the three departments of IWC is based on the core values, which is win, disciple, and lead. So there's a win uh, department, there's a discipleship department, and the lead department. So we will have a, that uh, in the coming days. Now, the discipleship department exists uh, for all IWC attendees. We want to see all IWC attendees and church members to go through the process, to go through the the, see the importance of the discipleship process, the, the growth process of the church, so that 
in their spiritual journey, everyone who goes through the, 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 the process, all right, will become a, a strong believer, you know, will become a person who is going to be um, someone who is going to grow in the faith. So we desire that everyone at IWC to be accountable to someone to ensure their growth, their growth in their faith. Because we don't want to see people or hear about people. They get to know Christ. And then next thing you know, they, well, where is that person? What happened to the person? Oh, they, well, we don't know. You know. They attended once and twice, but uh, we don't know. We wonder why. Um, I would never forget a time way back in my church, in, back home in the Philippines, that there is this young, one young person, and uh, Pastor Norman, there was this young person that started attending the church. So he would show up at the church, he would attend the, the, our uh, version of uprising, the youth fellowship, because we have a Tagalog service and English service in the, in the morning, and at 2 p.m. we have the youth service. So it's like, you're going to stay there from sunrise to sunset. And then after that, there's an evening service, so sunrise to sunset. Now, there is this young person who started attending the service, and then he started attending the youth. And nobody would bother that person. Nobody would talk because they were there in their own uh, groups. They were already in their own cliques. The youth are already with their friends, you know, that they get to see. And then this guy, just like, okay, no, nobody would... Say hi, hello. And then one particular Sunday, nobody saw him anymore. Oh, until he, he, he was noticed when he stopped attending the, the church, the, the youth particularly, the youth service. So what happened? A, w- a number of weeks and months, I think, that passed. That person, that young person, would go from house to house with, in another faith. And he would... He became so on fire. He became so devoted to the cause. And he would go from house to house, inviting people to their church. But I would say, it's not a Christian church. What if that person was touched? What if that person was followed up? What if that person was mentored or discipled? He could have been a a powerful evangelist. He could have been a, a pastor now. Nobody bothered to tap his potential. But someone did when he left the church. And that's a sad reality. So maybe we have people, we don't want people that come to IWC in all their different sites would just be a a seat warmer. Like to just attend Sunday after Sunday. No, we want you to grow in your faith. We want you to understand God in a deeper way. We want you to know what IWC, uh, the convictions of IWC. We want you to be nurtured in the faith. We want you to go through the membership so that you would understand that why you should be, why you should keep on attending IWC. There's something here. I don't know why. No, going through membership, going through the EGR, going through water baptism, going through even the, the leadership, the empower training so that you can be a person that God can use to start a small group, to share your faith with a group of people who are, who are new believers in Jesus Christ. That's why, that is the reason why we exist. We want to ensure that they, everyone grow in faith. Uh, every person that attends, grow, they grow in faith, develop to maturity, and be used by God to lead others to a relationship, to a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. We, em- we want to emphasize the importance of being able to be part of an existing life group. No one is an island. No man is an island. You cannot grow. You, you, you know, you cannot, we cannot grow alone. We need each other. We need the interaction in the life group. We need, we need, you know, we need, want you to be a part of a, of a youth group, the, the, the young adults group. Because if you say, oh, I know I'm, I'm going to grow attending the services. That's good enough for me. No, I, my uh, sincerest apologies. You won't. Because the growth continues um, the pastor cannot visit 400 people. He cannot minister to 400 people. But in the small group, you can be ministered to. You can be prayed for by the life group leader. You can be, you know, you are there. You, your, your gifts can be, uh, can be tapped, your potential. So that is why, this is why we exist. And we want you to understand what the disciple department is. So 
speaking about being a disciple, that is, to be a disciple of Jesus speaks about intimacy. And intimacy requires making our relationship with God a priority. Job 23 verse 12 says, I value your word more than my physical food. I value your word more than the, 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 the pandesal and the, with the cheese. I value your word more than the tapsilog. I value your word. No, I, I would like to encourage everyone, take time to read the word of God. Take time to seek God. Jeremiah 15, 16, just, when I discovered your words, I devoured them. They are my joy and my heart's delight. Jeremiah the prophet said, I, if, if, the, if um, the word of God is compared to, to spiritual food, so if we eat, how many of you eat three times a day? Raise your hand. Three times a day? No. Four? Four. Okay, five times a day. Six? There you go. Yeah, we have six, six times a day people here. Seven times a day. All right, so we've... We feed ourselves. We love to have our tummies, you know, be satisfied. We want it to be, we don't want it to be grumbling and, 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 and producing those sounds that like, oh my goodness, oh, he's mad now. Oh, I got to do something. But in the, in, our, in the spiritual sense, the word of God is how we are being fed. The word of God, and, and Jeremiah the prophet said, I devoured your word. How many of you, dev- you devoured a fried chicken? You know, if your parents would bring home a fried chicken from KFC or from chicken, I don't know, forgot, chef, whatever, and then you just have your way, right? You know, all the pizza and all those stuff, right? But Jeremiah, I devoured your word. I devalue your word. I discovered your words and I devoured them. You know, Oh, my kids, you know, they devoured the food at the house. They didn't save some for me. But how about devouring the word? Like, oh, I couldn't stop. Oh, it's been an, an hour. I, I just couldn't stop. It's, it's a free day, but uh, instead of watching a, a TV series and you're not content with one, see, one uh, episode, you want to go through the 10, 10 series, uh, what do you call it? Ten seasons. My golly, you're binge watching. But how about binge reading? Have you ever tried binge reading? And Pastor Bong, I tried it, but I fell asleep. Well, because maybe you were lying down, right? So when you read the Word, you sit without any back support. If you read the Bible and you, with, with, on a stool, sitting on a stool, so, the, so your flesh will not say, I'm sleepy. Like, you stop reading. No, 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 because if you, fo- if you fall asleep you'll fall to the ground and you're going to hurt yourself. So Matthew chapter 4, verses 5 to 7 says, let's read it together. Then the devil, the devil took him up in the holy city, Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, the highest point of the temple, and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. Verse 7. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you in their hands, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now, in, in Matthew chapter 4, you know, when Jesus was in the, in the wilderness, he was tempted by the devil thrice. Anyone here who has been tempted at least once in your life? Nobody. You have never been tempted. Wow. Okay, well... If Jesus was tempted, now temptation, the Bible says, temptation is not a sin. Do not say when you are tempted, you are tempted by God because God tempts nobody. So temptation is not from God, but falling into the temptation is sin. When you gave in, when the devil says, oh, do this, steal this, get this, etc., watch this, do this, etc. But when you, if you say, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I remember there was a time, this is, you may, I don't know, but if you'll say this funny, I was in my sleep. I had a dream. In my dream, there was this woman taking off her clothes. And she was saying to me, come on, come to me. 
You know what I said? I said in my dream to the woman who I've never seen before, must be an angel in disguise, like a, a demon in disguise, an angel of darkness. You know, I said to the, in my dream, in Jesus' name, get out of me, get, get out in Jesus' name. I, I said in my dream. And I know, she, she, she disappeared. So, the devil took Jesus in the city, and then, uh, Tempting Jesus, if you're the son of God, whoops. And I tell you, angels will be there too. What if Jesus gave in to the temptation? I'm pretty sure that uh, things will really be working not so well when it comes to our redemption. But Jesus said to me, it is written. How many of us, when we are in a t- during a time when we, can be, we are being tempted we can quote a scripture and says, God said, the Bible said, no, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do this. The Bible says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, and mind, and strength. Now, the Bible says, God will, uh, I will trust in the Lord with all my heart, and I will lean not on my own understanding. You know, oh, if I give up, give, don't, don't go to church. You know, you're so full of problems. You're, fu- you're so full of, you know, life is crushing on you. You know, that the, the church doesn't have the solution. The, you know, Jesus is not a solution. I love the, the date every August. When it comes to August, there's its date I love is August 28th. Whenever, the, because today is August 29th, whenever August 28th comes, which was yesterday, it always reminds me, of Romans 8, 28. 8, right? August is the 8th month, and then 28 is the 28th day. So it always reminds me, and I even posted on my Instagram a picture, and then I put a, the verse, Romans 8, 28, that all things will work together for good to those who love God. If you're a lover of God, if you, God knows that. If you're a lover of God, if you are a pursuer of God, if you're passionately pursuing God, wanting to know God, you know, if you're a person who wants to honor God in your relationship, whether it's boyfriend or girlfriend, whether it's your husband and wife, whether it's a, a mother and child, whatever, you know, God wants us to understand that all things will work together for for our good to those who love God. And whatever you're going through, if right now you're saying, Pastor, well, I'm going through a hard time, but I, wanna, I want God's help. And I tell you, I would like to encourage you to cry out to God. Now, the verses that we have talked about, the parable of the sower explains the four kinds of people in relation to God and His Word. So what is the, that parable that the, the, the disciples couldn't understand the meaning of which Jesus revealed to, to him, to them. Now, from Ma- Mark chapter 4, verses 1 to 9, there was this sower who sowed seeds on the pathway. So it's like the word of God being sown on the pathway. And what happens, so when it was on the pathway, the birds came and ate the, the seeds that were sown in the pathway. It's like saying people who have no time and desire whatsoever for God and His Word. Now, when the, the trouble comes, when the difficult time comes, it's taken away by the, by the devil. It's like the, the knowledge of God becomes, uh, all of a sudden, the, the devil will just say, I, did God really say that? Did it God, well, do you think God will do that? Do you think God will help you? And then the person will become, oh, uh, yeah, I don't think God can. But I heard all things will work together for good to those who love God. Well, I heard that if I seek Him, I will find Him when I seek Him, seek him with all of my heart. Do you really believe that? That God will show Him, reveal Himself to you? God will rescue you? God will help you in your difficult situation? It, that is a very impossible situation. You can't get out of, of, that, of that situation. But if you say, I'm going to hold on to God. But it just so happens that the seeds that were sown in the pathway, it, the word that was sown, that they received was taken away by the devil. Because they don't have the time, they don't have the time and the desire for the word of God. Now the second one is the word was sown on the stony ground. Now how many of you, uh, you see that uh, Canada is a fertile land? 
So whatever you, you sow and you plant, they really, but they don't grow in, in a stony ground. You have, it has to be soiled. It has to be cultivated. So the word that was sown on stony ground, people who are shallow in their commitment to God, who do not want to go all the way with God, people who want only the good, the blessings, but not the obedience, not the persecutions to endure, not the sacrifice. They don't want those things, but they just want the blessing of God. If, Lord, I pray this. If you will not do this, I will not read my Bible. Lord, I pray this. And if you don't do this, Lord, I will not attend IWC. Like, uh, okay. Um, like, oh, wow. I'm scared. You know, parang, wow. Lord, uh, the, Lord, the Lord is not like, your wish is my command. Give me three wishes and I'll give you whatever it may be. You cannot bring somebody back to life. You cannot make somebody fall in love with you. What, there are limitations. No. But when it comes to God, He's not a genie that you can squeeze. Okay. And He will give us everything that we desire. How many of you parents will give your keys of your beautiful cars, a brand new car, to your six-year-old? Okay, yeah. Anak, you can drive. Go to the, go to the, and, and buy me some suka. Buy me some toyo. No. Because God is a father, God is a good God. But people who are shallow in their commitment to God, the, who don't want to go all the way, it's like the, the, the word that was sown on stony ground, like the seeds that were sown, it will never grow. It will never bear fruit. Two more. The word that was sown among the thorns, these, it means that people who are divided in their devotion, half to the Lord and the other half to the world. Right? You live for God on Sunday and you live for yourself or for the enemy from Monday to Saturday. And Sunday, I'm going to live for the Lord. I'm going to lift up my hands. I'm going to worship the Lord. And then Monday comes again. No, no. It's got to be a life that we are to live every day of our lives for the Lord. Christianity or following Jesus is not a Sunday thing. But it's, uh, to be a follower of Jesus, it's, we, we follow him all the way. Lastly, the word that is sown on good ground. Now let me ask you, are you uh, a, gr- a stony ground, a thorny ground? Are you a pathway ground kind of uh, heart? Or are you, a, are you a good ground? That when something is sown, when, when, you, when you receive something from God, the yearning grows and the desire grows to know more and to know more and to seek God more and to, to be excited for more that, that what God has in store. That is a good ground. People who heartedly want to know God and hear what He wants to say. So He can be more intimate with God and walk by His side, side by side with Him. These people devote themselves substantial, they devote substantial time and the effort to worship and know God through prayer and study of the Word of the Lord. The reading and study of God's Word is not merely for purpose, for the purpose of information. Like, okay, I know, I know what, you know, Genesis to Revelation. I know there are 66 Bible, uh, books in the Bible. No, but to hear God and know Him speaking to your particular situation, for, your particular, for our particular need, for our particular desperation and trial and problem, and, and, and assuring us that He's not going to leave us or forsake us. As I conclude, I would like you to bow your heads, please. If you're here this morning and you say, Pastor Bong, I want to know more about Jesus. I want, to, I want to know Him intimately. I would like to encourage you to, to repeat this prayer after me. A simple prayer of, of surrendering your life to Christ. I remember 17 years ago, oh sorry, when I was 17, when I fully surrendered my life to Christ. I don't know what will happen next, but I know that I, I want to follow him all the way. I didn't know what I will become, but I said, I, I want to be a follower of Jesus. I want to be a disciple. I want to, I want to go all the way. 
I want to know His plan and His will and His, and His purpose for my life. And up to this very moment, not a day came when I, there was a regret or that I regretted the day that I made Him Lord and Savior of my life. And I encourage you, you will never go wrong with Jesus. If you're here and you want to surrender your life to Jesus, repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my life. You died on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins. You died on the cross because you love me. I surrender to you. From this day forward, be my Lord, be my master. Live your life in me. I will follow you. I want to follow you all the days of my life. Live your life in me. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you're starting on a new journey of faith. And I encourage you, if you, did, if you're watch, if you were watching and you, did, you prayed with me, you can let us know about that, that, oh, I prayed with Pastor Bong. Oh, I prayed the prayer. And if you want more information about how to grow in your faith, message us, email us here at IWC, and, we'll, and the church staff will, will connect with you. We want to know the decision that you made for, to surrender, that you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. Would you again, everyone in the, in the sanctuary, would you please bow your heads? Even you guys watching on, online, as I close the service today, I want to ask you, do you desire an intimate relationship with Christ? One that you never had before or you, you want to grow, you want to know, you want to go up to the next level in your faith walk, in your knowledge, in your understanding of the Lord. Would you lift up your hand if that is you? If you know that you know that God is speaking to you and, he's, and the Lord is saying, I want you to know me. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal myself to you. If that's you, come on, lift up your hand. You want this new encounter with Jesus? You want this fresh, hallelujah. The Lord sees that hand, those hands. Thank you. And shall we all rise to our feet? And I want to close this in prayer. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. All over the congregation, would you lift up your hands before the Lord? Connect with God. His holy presence is here in this place. The Lord is moving. Right where you're standing, what is your prayer? What do you want God to do? Say to Jesus. If Jesus is right there, right in front of you, standing right in front of you, and He's saying, what do you want me to do in your life? Would you utter, would you say that to Jesus? He's throwing a question, what do you want me to do? I want to encourage you. If you ask him, and sincerely ask him, he will do it. He will answer you can trust Jesus. He can work out that situation that seems impossible. He can work out a way where there seems to be no way. Your life is not over. This is not at the end of the road. Because Jesus, you're calling on Jesus. Come on. Because you're calling on the name of the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Call on the name of Jesus. Jesus never fails. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. When you lift up your hand, it's a sign of surrender. It's like when people are held up, you lift up your hand because you don't want to have any resistance. 
You don't want to fight it. Both hands. Lord Jesus, we surrender. We surrender to your Lordship. We surrender, God, to your will. We surrender this situation. We surrender, God, all these troubles, all these trials and difficulties and the challenges of life, Lord. We surrender. I surrender to you. I know nothing is impossible with you. Lord, I pray today that every person at the sound of my voice and those, even those who are watching online will sense, will sense God, the touch of God, the hand of the Lord, the assurance of the Lord that God is saying, I am in control. I'm going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rescue you. I'm going to show myself strong in your behalf. If you trust in the Lord, if you trust in me with all of your heart, and if you do not lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways you will acknowledge me, I will direct your paths. He will crown your efforts with success. God will be with you. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, you see every heart. You see every desire, Lord. You see every person, God. Lord, I pray from this day forward, there's going to be, Lord, from your people, intimacy will rise. Their love for you, their, their hunger for you, to seek you, to know you, God. The, the, the appetite, the insatiable appetite to know God and to live for God will rise from this place to, and will rise in the hearts of your people, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we want to know you. We want to know you more. We want to love you more. We want to serve you more. We want to do your will. Bless your people. From this day forward, all throughout the week, keep us hungry. Cause us to be thirsty. Cause us, God, to, to spend time with you and to treasure every moment with you, God. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, I pray that your people will encounter you in this place. A fresh encounter, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Spirit of the living God. Pour out your presence. Pour out your glory, Spirit of the living God, encounter your people. I pray for a revelation of God like never before. I pray for a revelation of Jesus like never before. In every hungry heart, in every thirsty heart, God, we give you glory, we give you praise in Jesus' name and God's people say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. If you wish to connect with us online, here are our social media accounts where you could follow us or watch live stream videos of our services. And here's our website where you can join a life group, give online, and watch past videos and many more. Again, my name is Jenny, and here's WhatsApp at IWC.